circle here. So we actually just planted potatoes up to the, the end tower on the sprinkler. So we had the entire corner system out here and we didn't want to just leave this bare fallow ground out here. We wanted to utilize this area to our advantage. So what we actually did is took the green manure that we planted. It's the same green manure mix that's over on this other circle that we'll look at next. And I've got a valve on the sprinkler where I can turn the corner system on and off. So I've only put three irrigations out here, enough to establish the green manure crop out here. And the motivation behind this is we needed enough water to establish it. We wanted ground cover, hold down the soil from blowing, but also wanted to create a habitat here. Um, there's a lot of flowering plants in this mixture for tracking uh, predatory insects, which is really beneficial to us because we grow certified seed. So we've got buckwheat, flax, and some mustard out here. So once they get to bloom in, it's great habitat. Um, a lot of legumes out here, which are known for attracting predatory insects as well. But the other thing that's really nice is when aphid come into a potato field, when they're flying around, they'll end up seeing a brown patch like this. And once they get to a green spot, that's where the aphid will actually drop out of the sky. So hopefully if I have aphid coming into my field, they have to come in through this entire buffer strip of green manure first. And what this does is gives them the chance to clean their stylets. So if they are carrying a virus, hopefully they are clean by the time they enter my field. So at least I'm not introducing any virus from outside into our, into our certified potato crop. The other thing that's a little different too is right around the edge on the potato crop. And this was something I've been planning on doing anyways is we uh, developed a flowering mix specific towards attracting predatory insects. So that's what I've got on the table here as we went through and did a, a flowering scavenger hunt this morning and tried to find all the different flowers that are out in that ring right around the potato crop. So all of these plants are high nectar producing flowers which can actually feed and sustain predatory insect populations. So this way I can establish and build predatory insect populations in my field, right around my field, before the pest insect ever shows up. So that's kind of the motivation behind that. Then the other thing to look at too, what you see in this bucket is I'm, I've been playing around with companion cropping in potatoes. So everything you see in this bucket I planted directly in with my potato crop. We've got three different legumes in here. We've got peas, desi chickpea, chickling vetch, and then we've got buckwheat right in the potato crop as well. I like the buckwheat out of my potato crop for attracting the predatory insects. Colops beetles, lady beetles absolutely love this plant. So once again I can establish those populations in my field. And then we've got different legumes out there for uh, nitrogen fixation right during my potato growing season. So I don't have to wait for the rotation crop to add those legumes out there. And the legumes, once again, produce extra floral nectars, can attract predatory insects to my field before the pest insect gets there. So I don't, before when I didn't have those crops out there, I actually had to establish a pest population first before the predatory populations would establish. Now I'm trying to reverse and establish my predatory populations before the insects have a chance to come into my field. When do you plant your companion crop? The companion crop is planted at the same time I'm planting my potatoes. I've got a potato planter that's designed with candy boxes on it. So we actually plant that seed right along with the potato seed piece. Um, they're planted at the same depth as the potato seed piece, so that gives us a chance to cultivate, control our weeds, and then right after that, that's when the companion crop starts popping up. What's really cool about most of the legumes I've selected there is the potatoes will grow, and then the legumes will actually climb the potato crop. So the two actually complement each other very well. Um, we've seen a lot of benefit there just as far as overall nutrient cycling. It's helping reduce a lot of our other inputs towards growing this crop. Because now I've got legumes in my green manure crop, but I've also got legumes in my potato crop as well. So now I've got nitrogen fixation on every acre of my farm every single year. <clears throat> so we, we're a, a 15 species mix this year on the green manure crop, which is this outer buffer strip mm -hmm. here. So we've got lentils, chickling veg, spring forage peas, chickpea, oats, pearl millet, brown top millet, brown midrib grazing corn, broadleaf mustard, nitro radish, impact forage collards, turnips, flax, sunflower, and buckwheat. It's real similar to the mix I had last year, but I did add more flowering crops to it this year. I'm really emphasizing the uh, habitat for beneficial insects this year. Um, the other thing that was in mind when we developed this grazing mix, uh, this green manure mix is we geared it towards grazing. And after we take a look out here, we're gonna go across to the other circle, and we've actually got cattle out on our green manure this year. So we designed a mix that was very grazer friendly, and we're gonna let the cattle do some of the work for us this year out there, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. As far as the flowering mix, here's what we've got in the flowering mix, which is about a 15 foot strip right around the potato crop. Uh, we've got woolly pod vetch, lentils, spring forage peas, buckwheat, flax, sunflower, 
uh, three different clovers, brown mustard, white mustard, nitro radish, and phasalia. And then there was another little bit of flowery mix in there that included some marigolds and some cosmos. I haven't seen a whole lot of them coming in there. Buffer strip out here, I've put two inches of irrigation water on it, but we did have a nice inch of uh, rain on it about a week ago, so it's had about three inches of water out here. On the potato crop itself, I'm on, at 10 and a half inches, and then the green manure crop that we're going to be seeing here in just a minute, I'm at 5.3 inches.